Hi, I'm back. Last time I showed you where and why women were invisible. Yeah, that's right. In the history of computers and coding, women have been made invisible, even though they played a significant role in software development. In these classes, I'm going to show you what happened and tell you all about the history of tech. So, I've told you about ENIAC 6, the ladies of the sky map, and the computers that wear skirts. So, we're okay, right? Well, not exactly. This episode isn't called Houston, We Still Have a Problem for Nothing. We've seen how women made essential calculations for space travel. Maybe you assume that women must have a seat at the table by now. Well, they should. The amount of female astronauts graduating from NASA's astronaut class has risen significantly since the 1970s. Woohoo! But the majority of astronauts are still men. Recently, NASA was forced to scrap the first all-female spacewalk in history because there were not enough smaller spacesuits available on board the International Space Station. It's not the first time male engineers have made a big miscalculation. Sally Ride was asked if 100 tampons were enough for her one week in space. So let's consider this problem of planning or designing for people that are different from yourself. We'll do that by zooming in on the internet. Hmm. The internet. What is the internet? What does it do? Who made it? Does its design influence the way that it's used today? What do you think? Take a moment to discuss this in your class. Okay, are we back? Yeah, the internet is a lot of things, right? You use it to play movies, listen to music, shop for clothes, connect with your friends, and so many other things. But in order to understand how the internet influences us today, we have to know how it originated. It wasn't always this big network connecting computers and people all around the world. The precursor to the internet was called the ARPANET, a network that connected universities together to exchange information. The first people to use the ARPANET were scientists, researchers, and people in the military. But with the arrival of personal computers, this new network became accessible to more people, including women, of course. Some women on the early internet enjoyed going to bulletin boards, places where they could exchange their thoughts and ideas on topics they found interesting with people from all around the world. Take, for example, this hero, Stacy Horn, who created her own bulletin board, Echo, in the 1980s. At the time, the internet was still mostly male, but Stacy's bulletin board had 40% female users. How did she do that? Well, she cared. <laughs> she made sure that every conversation always had two moderators, a man and a woman. In this way, women's values and perspectives were included, and women signing on to her service could see themselves reflected in its culture. Stacy understood that a plurality of perspectives just made the system better, more interesting. Now, this kind of care is really important on the internet, because the internet is made of people. But care hasn't always been a priority, especially as the internet has been developed and commercialized. With the arrival of the World Wide Web, many, many new people came online. And it made the designers of these new public spaces wonder what the internet should be modeled after. In the beginning, many people thought of the internet as a kind of city, a place where citizens, or netizens, could do the same thing they would do in a city. For example, you might vote online, or get your mail in a virtual post office, or, or visit another city via a station. In the Dutch initiative De Digital Stadt, there were public squares for education, health, and women's and LGBT issues, for example. Companies and corporations could host a store or a website linked to a specific interest, and netizens could participate by creating their own digital space in the online city. On a global scale, there was the website GeoCities, where netizens could share information on a topic of interest via their own personal web pages. These people took care of their web pages because they belonged to them. Web pages were their online homes. 
they cared for their web pages just like Stacey Horn cared for Echo. In 1999, Yahoo acquired GeoCities for $3.5 billion. Yahoo was a search engine, like Google. They changed the terms and conditions. Before, the netizens took care of their own web pages. They owned all the text, sounds, and images that made up their digital space. But after the takeover, all the content suddenly belonged to the provider, Yahoo, and not to the people contributing to the platform. Many citizens, or netizens, abandoned their web pages, and Yahoo was left with an abandoned city. In 2009, they decided to pull the plug and delete the city altogether. The Dutch media artist and information designer Richard Fiehen got his hands on the 650 gigabyte BitTorrent file and decided to turn the deleted city into an artwork. His work is an homage to a time when the internet was a place built by its users, a diverse population who took care of the internet together. As the years passed, this kind of takeover kept on happening. Big companies acquired smaller companies, turning their contributors into users or internet customers. Services were no longer developed with them, but for them. Users became addicted to the dopamine-stimulating platforms they engaged with every day. They were no longer taking care of each other. Instead, corporations were taking care of their own interests. This changed the internet irrevocably. A new world began to emerge, where revenue and profits became more important than citizenship, participation, community, and care. How do you feel about this? Do you think we should take better care of the internet so that we can have a safer place for everyone? Have you ever had an experience where a platform or web page wasn't designed for you? How did that make you feel? Thank you so much for joining me again today. If you like these videos, you can follow me on social media, sign up for the Moo newsletter, and give a thumbs up to every woman you know that works in tech. See you next time.